Isn't it amazing how life's changing for all of us? Look at these little beauties. I've even started exercising in the morning. So if you're possessed, give us a shout. Hey everyone, I hope you're staying healthy and keeping safe. That's the uh, cat entertained for um, the morning. Isn't it amazing what you entertain yourselves with in lockdown? Anyway, uh, podcasts. Podcasts are great, aren't they? I love a good podcast. There's nothing I like more if I'm on tour, I'm on a long journey, I'm heading up the motorway, put on a great podcast. They can be both educational and informative. So that's where I am this morning, uh, driving up the M6 roads a bit bumpy uh, but it's good fun i've been sitting in the van listening to my podcasts it's absolutely fantastic i'm busting for a wee can't wait till i get to the next service station um and yeah just enjoying a good podcast now lots of people have contacted us this week and <laughs> said um should i start a podcast how do i start a podcast uh what do i need to do to record it bloody bloody blah well i think the first question should i start a podcast is probably the most important and I think maybe the answer for a lot of people is no you shouldn't start a podcast and there's three reasons why you shouldn't start a podcast reason number one is because it's going to be boring as f and no one's going to listen to it reason number two is because you're going to be recording it at home and it's going to sound like sh and no one's going to listen to it and reason number three is that you're going to get the optimization all wrong and not promote it well enough and no one's going to listen to it unless you watch the tips in this video Oh, well, that was a journey and a half. I'm glad to be home. So let's look at some of the points I raised in the van. So firstly, should you launch a podcast? Um, so the first question you need to ask is, can I provide weekly content? Because a podcast really needs to be weekly. Can I provide weekly content regularly that will entertain, um, educate, and inform my audience? Can I make it something that people want to listen to every week? Now, I listen regularly to about five or six podcasts, and there are several podcasts I've started to listen to, but got a little bit bored with them after a while and kind of switched off. And the one thing I've noticed is that the most engaging podcasts and the most effective ones are the ones that are co-hosted. It can be very difficult to listen to someone on their own in a room rabbiting on about something like you poor guys and girls are now. Uh, so I think co-hosting a podcast is the most effective way. Now, all of the five or six that I regularly listen to are all co-hosted. So there's two presenters um, and they're, you know, talking about the subject of the podcast on that particular week. And it's more like a conversation. It's like listening in on their conversation. Um, there's twice as many ideas going around. The presenters are bouncing off of each other. And I think that is the most effective way to do it. And later in this video, we're going to have a look at how you can co-host a podcast remotely so without having to physically be in the same room as someone which obviously is a big consideration in the crisis we're in the middle of at the moment so that's the first thing can you create a podcast that's interesting engaging and entertaining and if the answer is yes then great that's the first thing you should look at so let's have a look at the second point and that is the technicalities of recording it how can you get a podcast that doesn't sound awful now we've had decades of listening to tv and radio and we know what good audio sounds like subconsciously because we've had so many professionally produced programs thrust in front of us over the years we know the difference between good and bad and if it's bad people are going to turn off unless it's so stupendously engaging um, people aren't going to be able to hear past the atrocious audio and they are going to turn off so it's very important that you get the audio right now under normal circumstances you'd go into a studio and record your podcast or many offices and business complexes have rooms set up where you can record a podcast they're soundproof rooms they're acoustically treated they've got professional microphones in there indeed at our studio we've recorded many many podcasts and a lot of voiceover work for film and tv and stuff like that and we set up the live room which is a properly acoustically treated room uh, we set that up specifically for the podcasts each presenter co-host 
guest, interviewer, interviewee have their own microphone. It's a professional broadcast quality microphone and we record the audio in a quiet, closed environment. If, if you know helicopters are flying overhead, it doesn't matter. You don't hear it in the room where we record. Obviously, at the moment, people looking to launch a podcast are more than likely going to be able to do it from home because of the social distancing and the stay at home message. And that's the responsible thing to do. You need to be doing it from home. So how can you do that? Well, the first First thing to do is to look at the room in which you record the audio. So you want the quietest room in the house and you want the most absorbent room in the house. So if you walk into different rooms in your house and just talk, you'll hear reflections coming back off the walls and some rooms will sound better than others. Now it's probably gonna be a bedroom or the living room purely because of the amount of soft furnishing in there. And there are many steps you can take to improve the acoustics of your room for recording at home. And to get some tips and tricks on those, then watch the video we posted a couple of days ago. Link is above the screen now. Watch that video and that will show you how you can just use things around the house um, to treat a room. It's what I did in this room. It went from an awful sounding room to a great sounding room and I know that I can now sit here and record videos like this and you're not going to have to put up with really awful audio. It's not quite as good as I'd like it but it's a lot better than it was when it was an empty room at the beginning of the week. So there are things you can do to improve the audio. Second thing you're going to have to look at is some sort of microphone solution. Now the best way to do it is to get a dedicated dynamic cardioid microphone. Um, a cardioid dynamic will pick up much less of the acoustic in the room and much more of your voice, but that means getting one and getting one might not be as easy as you think at the moment. Um, if you, there, there are many options for those. Um, I'd recommend a company called Rode who make great stuff and they do a microphone that's got a USB socket in the bottom you can just plug it into a computer and you can record the audio straight into the computer that's going to be your best and most professional option um, if you do order something like that try and order it from one of the independent businesses that are still providing a mail order service someone like studio spares or someone like that rather than one of the big boys like Amazon um, for two reasons. One is because I think we're all looking at morality a bit more these days and Amazon have enough of everyone's business uh, and they're not necessarily cheaper for things like this. And at the moment, there's a delivery time of at least a month. So if you go to someone like Studio Spares, which is a private independent run business, they will have the microphones in stock and they'll be able to ship them out to you probably with a one or two day delivery time. So support the small guys like that. They really need our help at the moment. The third option, if you don't want to go down that route, is to use the microphone that you will inevitably already have. Now, this isn't the ideal solution, but it can work with a bit of sort of clever post-production processing, and that is the microphone in this. Now, everyone I know has a smartphone, and a smartphone has a microphone in it, so as you can phone people. It's as simple as that. It's not the best microphone in the world, but they're getting better. The newer the phone, the better. So this is an iPhone 11 Pro, I think. Um, and there's a microphone in the bottom and it actually sounds pretty good if you use it right. So my top tip for this is to get the room sounding as dead as you possibly can. And when you talk into the microphone, don't talk into it like this. And the reason you don't want to talk into it like this is because every time you say a P or a B, there's going to be a rush of air. You can feel it if you hold your hand in front of your mouth and say anything with the letter B in it, like B or bank or bumhole, you can feel that air coming out. What happens is the air comes out of your mouth, it hits the microphone, it distorts the diaphragm and you get a big pop in the audio and that's really annoying to listen to. So you're not going to be able to get what's known as a pop filter very easily, which is basically a, a kind of mesh type device that in professional studios we put in between um, a person and the microphone to stop to break up that air and to make it less kind of pronounced when you listen back to the recording. You could make one if you've got an old pair of tights lying around, you could bend a metal coat hanger, which is what we used to do back in the day because pop professional pop filters were really expensive. We'd get a wire coat hanger, bend it into a sort of circle shape and then stretch a pair of tights over it. Um, you can do that, but the easiest way to avoid that is to hold the microphone fairly close to your mouth, but at an angle. So then in any P's or B's, 
oh, the, the, the air is going past the microphone, but it's still capturing your voice. Um, that's probably the most effective way to do it. So once you've done that, once you've recorded your audio, if you want to make your podcast a success, you need to be able to edit it fairly well, cut out any fluffs, any mistakes, anything like that. And that's where someone like us come in. So we we edit lots of podcasts, we edit lots of video, we do lots of multimedia stuff like that. So you can use a company like us to send us your audio, just send it. If you're recording it on your phone, you can send it straight from your phone. We will then do all the post-production, all the editing and make it sound as good as we possibly can. And we can add music, we can add sound effects, we can, if you want an intro to every episode like the, the present day production intro we have on the front of all of our our videos we can make you a little intro like that and we can get it sounding as good as possible that's really important not only that but we can also upload it to the podcast services for you because that can be quite a difficult step to negotiate um, I'm Apple certified in terms of audio so I'm an Apple certified mastering engineer so um, I have the necessary sort of authorizations and knowledge to be able to upload stuff directly to Apple so we can kind of take care of all that for you and if that's something you would be interested in then please get in touch uh, visit our website at presentdayproduction.com or you can leave a message in the comments below or find us on Facebook there's lots of different ways you can get in touch but if that's something you'd be interested in then please get in touch with us and we for sure will be able to help you not only with the editing and the post-production but also in the um, you know how to get the best sound out of your room how to use the microphone if you've got one how to use your phone if you haven't got one we can just get the best out of it for you and we can also give you some tips and tricks on how to promote your podcast and how to get it in front of an audience now that's the third point that i brought up is that in most cases uh, most people aren't going to listen to your podcast you're going to share it on facebook and stuff like that and you're going to get five or ten or fifteen people listen and then it will quickly tail off that's kind of generally what happens um, in fact the, st the statistic from apple is that one percent of all podcasts get featured on the Apple podcast homepage. That's a tiny, tiny amount, but there are ways that you can massively increase your chances of getting featured, especially on the launch day. If you properly plan a podcast launch, then you can get featured pretty quickly on that page and that can have a huge effect on you know how it grows how it's promoted whether or not apple recommend it and how quickly you can grow an audience again that's something we can help with on your podcast journey so let's go back briefly to the co-hosting thing i said earlier that co-hosted podcasts are much more interesting now how can you do that with the current social distancing situation with a lot of people stuck in isolation how can you do that if you can't meet your co-host at a studio and record your podcast professionally well again the answer to that one is these things if you've got two devices in your house which i'm sure all of you have and you haven't got a microphone a dedicated podcast microphone then you can use a phone uh, you can use your phone to record your voice from the podcast and then you can use a second device, so a husband or wife's phone or a, a son or daughter's phone. Most households have at least two of these devices in them these days. You can use that to do a FaceTime or a video call with your co-host. So let's get in touch with James and see how that might work. So I've got James up on FaceTime. Here he is. I'm recording my audio into the phone. Uh, the reason why I'm still recording my audio into the phone and not using the audio on the iPad is because whatever device I'm having the FaceTime call with is going to be further away. It's going to pick up more of the acoustics of the room, which inevitably aren't going to be perfect. So the key here is if you're co-hosting, then do FaceTime on one device, uh, but still record the audio on your main audio recording device, if that makes sense. So let's have a little chat and see how this works. So here we are, we're all set up. We're both recording our audio into our main audio recording devices. That could be a phone, it could be a microphone, as we said earlier. It's important that you record the audio separately because when you're FaceTiming, you're gonna be at a bit of a distance and the microphone on the device you're FaceTiming on is gonna sound fairly awful just because you're far away from it. So use one device so as you can see each other and you can do the co-hosting thing um, and then use a separate device to record, that's key. So one other thing you can do 
in order to kind of promote yourself even more is that you can record the video like we're doing here um, and you could also record you know a third angle from another device and then you've got content for YouTube what do you think of that as an idea James I think that's a really good idea that's like killing two or three birds with one stone yeah, and there's quite a few podcasts that you can also listen to on YouTube, but generally they just have the, the sort of card of the podcast channel, just a static photo up, and then you've got sort of, you know, 30 minutes of looking at that whilst listening to the audio. Well, if you're like me, I think most, well, most people, if not just most young people, have a really short sense of uh, patience. Yeah, and a short attention span attention span that's the word i'm looking for see i couldn't even find the patience to think of what i'm thinking of <laughs> exactly but yeah basically what i'm trying to say is you know it if you're sitting listening to something you might get bored so sometimes it's nice to have something to look at as well you can you can feel more connected with the person doing the podcast because you can see what's going on you can kind of read their expressions and you just feel a bit more involved with it rather than them just dictating to you yeah exactly so so I like to sort of consume media in various ways depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm driving, I'll listen to a podcast because it's purely audio. Yeah. If I'm in the shower, I'll quite often listen to a podcast. If I'm cooking in the kitchen, I'll listen to a podcast. Whereas if I'm having a poo, uh, I'm, I might watch a YouTube video because that's better than looking at, you know, the toilet roll or the non-existent toilet roll um as as we are at the moment um so you know before i go and wipe my bum on the grass outside um i'll i'll quite often watch a youtube video while i'm having a poo or if i'm just sitting down trying to relax then i'm more likely to watch a youtube video than i am to listen to a podcast so if you video your podcast recording which is again something that we do at the studio we'll capture the audio and we'll quite often do video at the same time and then you've got two lots of content you've got a podcast which you can upload to the podcast site but you've also got a podcast that you can put on youtube that's a bit more interesting than just staring at a static graphic for however long so not only does it make for more interesting content it also opens up to the platforms you can distribute to because if you've got just audio as you say it's just going to be spotify apple podcasts and then maybe just a card on youtube whereas if you've got video as well you can post it you know you can do a separate post on facebook on instagram on everything so you're really opening up the opening up the gate to where you can go with it and yeah, how it can exactly. be distributed yeah. yeah that's that's a really good point um so here's just a brief demo on how you can you can co-host a podcast remotely because obviously um i'm not allowed to be within uh one kilometer of james at the moment that's nothing to do with the uh, coronavirus that's the restraining order after <laughs> wrap wrapping him up in analog tape for a week ago uh, have you managed to get your hair sorted? No, you haven't. You've got a hat on, so obviously no. your hair's. I've been wearing ruined. a hat all week. Yeah, I've ruined his hair, uh, but and he can't go to the hairdressers either. No. So yeah, that's that. Actually, what we do need to work on is we need to work on a way that you can get a remote haircut. That is genius. Let's make a plugin for it. Yeah, that the the haircut plugin that would be fantastic. <laughs> there we go. Next video idea. Definitely. So just a quick recap. Point number one is, should you launch a podcast? I think, yes, the answer is probably yes at the moment because there's a lot of people listening to podcasts. Uh, podcasts are, are on the rise and the audience for podcasts tend to, at the moment, be a lot more engaging with your content than um, YouTube audience, Facebook audience. There's um, to, to just go over some of the statistics again, some of them are staggering. So there's a, a statistic that, was, uh, that came out last year 2019 that says that 63 percent of all podcast listeners buy something recommended by the host at least once every three months so the opportunity for marketing not just your own brand on your own business but the opportunity for marketing marketing into and monetization in terms of affiliate links and you know all the other things you can do to try and bring some extra money in are huge it's a really powerful platform for that the second thing is looking at recording the audio so pick the best room in the house throw some duvets up in the wall get as many soft furnishings 
things in there as you can. Have a look at our previous video, which is up on the top of the screen now for some tips and tricks on how to get a room sounding great to work in, in terms of audio. Um, so how are you gonna do that? What, have you got a microphone? Can you use your phone? There's loads of, of, of apps you can use on a phone for recording audio. If you've got an iPhone, you're gonna have the voice memo app built in and that's great, that's as good as anything, but there's other apps like Anchor and things like that, which are cross platform. So Android, Google, um, iOS, they'll work on all the devices. So that's one way to do it. And if it means getting started and doing it, then getting started and doing it well now is a, is a fantastic time to do something like that, which is why we've launched this YouTube channel. Um, and the third point is post-production. So we can take care of the post-production for you. Obviously, if you're audio guys and you're, you're watching this, you're gonna know how to do that. You're gonna have a DAW. You're gonna be able to add compression, EQ, denoise if necessary. You're gonna have all the tools to do that. But this is aimed more at the kind of business person that wants to launch a podcast, but has no knowledge of, of audio processing or recording or anything like that. And we can help, that's what we do. So we, that's, you know, where we can come in and help you out we can also help with the monetization we can help with the launch um, we know all the figures so you need at least five episodes in the bank in order to be able to um, launch your first episode on for example itunes um, so we can work with you on the things like that um, on how to get reviews if you get as many reviews as possible within the first 72 hours then you're more likely to feature on the new and noteworthy apple homepage. again that's something we can work with you on and we could just kind of take you through the the whole process we can upload it for you and do all that malarkey so if that's something you'd be interested in uh, get in touch visit the website links on the screen now uh, send us a message on facebook you know get in touch somehow and we'll be more than happy to to work with you on that thanks very much for watching hope to see you all soon hope you're staying healthy and happy please subscribe if you haven't already please share this if you think this content might be useful to someone you know that runs a small business or you know please share subscribe like do all those lovely things and we'll see you in the next video cheers